All right, guys, we're going to talk about the regionals in Melbourne, Australia. Top 16 lists are out. The regionals happened the same day as the Knoxville regionals. So it's pretty much the same meta and very familiar decks we're going to see here that we've seen topping other tournaments. Just want to jump right in, guys. We're going to start with number 16, Gardevoir here. Let's look at the difference in the Australian meta, see if it's insanely different. But yeah. As you can see, he's running the Kerala's, the Ralts. Only one EX Gardevoir. We usually see two. He is running a Mewtwo v, v Union card. I'm assuming it's for the final burn. And also the Photon Barrier is pretty strong. <laughs> This is absolutely amazing. This guard four actually ran a me to v, v union deck. It has the union gain, it has super regeneration, Psyoplosion, put 16 counters on your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. And the photon barrier. Wow. Very interesting idea to throw in here. The Kleffa as well. It's actually this Kleffa is actually kind of broken. Because it automatically draws you 7. It doesn't matter if you have energy, whatever it is. Turn 2, it draws you 7. It's kind of broken, to be honest. Wow, what an interesting deck. This is, look at this Australian meta, guys. He's got Luxray. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in your hand, you have more prize cards than your opponent, you may put this Pokemon onto your bench. So immediately you get this Pokemon... And then you can start beating up uh, your opponent. And you can use your reversal energies to get him uh, all the way to one, you know, all the way pumped up. One reversal energy can get him pushed fully. Damn, yeah, Luxury works with the reversal energy, which is why we see much more reversal energies than we see in normal Gardevoir deck. What an interesting idea. To use Gardevoirs as a, the Gardevoir EX just as an uh, accelerator instead of an actual attacker. And then have a bunch of one one prize Pokemon that can use the reversal energy. And also use the Me Too V Union. Because you're giving him so much, you can give the Me Too so much uh, psychic energy. And then you can just heal it all out with the super regeneration. Pretty interesting idea here guys. And it worked. It's top 16. Let's look at here. He's got a couple of Xenias. Uh, a couple of Fog Crystals. And just some Artisans. Very interesting idea. Also one Peonia. Very interesting idea. It worked out really well. It's actually top 16. Gardevoir. Absolutely insane. So he, he used Gardevoir as the support unit instead of the like major attacker. And then he uh, had uh, other attackers that can utilize the acceleration of energy. Really, really smart. We've got number 15 here. By Sean, Mew Fusion Strike is still working, but looks like this is just DTE Mew. It looks like the other Mews, the ones that add Meloetta and try to attack with Meloetta, are not really that strong anymore. Uh, they're just easily countered. Path, Spirit Tomb. There's so many ways to counter these decks. Makes sense to just keep a couple of Fusion Strike energy, not for the Meloetta, but so you can activate your Genesex even if you get shut down. And then you can also run the TM Devos in this deck. That makes total sense as well. Uh, you know, some turns you don't you don't get the KO, but if you just uh, TMD will slow down the opponent, you you can get really far ahead. Also, of course, you run Box of Disasters for this, for uh, the V-Star matchup, the Lost Zone matchup. Also running Judges. Actually, you do run Judge. You actually can run the Judge, turn one, play it, and then you still gain from it, whereas the opponent uh, restarts his whole hand. It's actually very, very beneficial for you to start Judge. Only one Alyssa Sparkle. We don't see many one Alyssa Sparkles, but it's not a break priority for him. Three Crams. Crams are huge. It's crazy. Only run three. But maybe he just doesn't trust them. Maybe his RNG is not hitting. Heavy Ball, Feather Ball, Palpad, and Escape Probe. Really interesting ideas here, guys. Um, Mew V is still strong. He's just a very, very consistent deck. Can be held down, can be kind of controlled a little bit, but still very strong. Let's move on number 14, Lost Box Charizard. A Radiant Charizard and the Lost Box, you know, in a bunch of comp phase. 
Also, the stable I will start the charge and then radiant charger will end it. Well, really, it's cram into stable I into radiant charger. I think is that that's how your attacking formation is gonna look. You start with the cram, then once you get to ten, you start attacking with the stable I, and after that, you actually the opponent gets. Because you're only running one prize, it's going to take the opponent a while to get to two prizes, and that's when Radiant just pops off. Psychic Energy at 3, 2 Fire, and 1 DTE. Pretty straightforward deck, guys. Does really good. This deck, this Lost Zone toolbox with the Charizard is doing really well, guys. Pretty much the same deck is winning a lot of tournaments, as you can see right here. Even the best players in the world, like Alex Shimnaske. Uh, is running these decks, so it's very, very strong. Yeah, moving on, guys. We got another Gardevoir here. Let's see this one. This one actually runs Screamtail. No Mewtwo. <laughs> it's just a regular Screamtail, Zacian V, uh, Cresselia. Yeah, this is how strong the Gardevoir is. Uh, it actually can run different uh, power, power units and still can perform really, really well. This Gardevoir is totally different. This is more, more of a... Regular card war we've seen win other tournaments, but that one, the Mewtwo V Union, is pretty interesting. Giratina in the Lost Box gets to number 12. I love this deck, guys. Very consistent. Only one cram, one Sableye. That's really all he needs. That's pretty impressive. Really focused on that Giratina V attacks. Uh, sometimes I, th I think you need two crams. Just because if you... Put one in the prize, you can't get an early knockout and can really slow you down. So it's interesting that he only runs one. But look at this energy as well. Three water, three grass, so a lot of energies. So he he likes to use the Radiant Greninja, it looks like. Some Colorist, some Roxans, Pocky Gears, and Switch Card. Guys, I would get a lot of uh, <laughs> ideas from this deck, guys. If I'm looking to run Tina Lost Box, I'm looking at the best decks in the format to build this deck. There's one Avery. I think this Avery is to counter Roaring Moon. To slow down other lost box decks, lost zone decks, and to also kind of shut down uh, like Gardevoir, stuff like that. It can really slow down a lot of that. This really hurts Gardevoir every. If he has two Kerala's, he literally has to lose his whole board except the Kerala's. It's gonna be really, really bad for him. So, yeah, it makes sense that there's one Avery, guys. Look into that. Before the Avery is gone. Moving on, another Gardevoir here. This one is running another Scream Tail as well. Very, very uh, similar to the 13th place. Uh, I think the, one of the only differences is the uh, actual stadiums they're running. This one's running Artisans and Collapse. That one was only running Artisans, in my uh, I believe. Also, some more Fog Crystals. There is a Turo scenario picking up the Gardevoir EX if it's taking any damage or. Now, if it's taking any damage at all, maybe if he just doesn't want it to be on the board to lose two prizes. Makes sense. All right, guys, let's move on here. We got a Charizard DX that actually did good. It's very hard for Charizards to do good anymore. They're very consistent decks. The problem is they're easily countered. They're really easily controlled and held down. So let's look at this deck. He's running a Radiant Charizard in here. Pretty... Um, common and uh, popular set of uh, Pokemon, but he is running seven energy, so not super greedy. Three boss, two Arvins, two Arvins only? Wow, this is the only Charizard deck that actually focused Iona over Arvin. That's crazy. Four rare candies, two nest balls. Wow, no level balls, just nest ball. Oh, one level ball right there. One counter catcher, one escape rope, and uh, one artisan, one collapse, and two loss of vacuum. Wow, very impressive. Must be just a very consistent player to really do very well. I, 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 this is a very popular list for Charizard. I think he just runs much more Ionos than he does the Arvins, but still, Charizard's been uh, having a lot of problems. He used to be very strong, but now everybody knows how to counter him, how to slow him down with Path, Rock Sands, and everything. And you really can't get ahead anymore. Especially since Charizard waits the late game to actually use all this power. When you get to late game, you don't have the cards you need. Which makes sense why everyone's running Pidgeot in this deck. Because you need certain cards late game so you can push insane amounts of damage. 
but uh, if the opponent controls you with the rocks in and paths you and you cannot get out of that, that's pretty much game over. And it's pretty consistent to do that. You can do that against the Charizard really easily. Here we got ninth place Gardevoir here by Angus. Pretty similar to every other Gardevoir. Um, one Cresselia, one Mew. Oh, this one actually runs Mews. The Satian V is there. Ultra Balls, Level Balls, and Fog Crystals, what he's going to use to search. And the Battle VIP Pass as well. Very interesting. Uh, Gardevoir. Gardevoir is doing really good right now in the meta. Another Lost Box Giratina. This one runs only one cram. Maybe I should only run one cram. I guess you just attack once with him, and after that, it's pretty much useless. And if he ever goes into the trash, you can just super raw them in, right? That makes total sense. Everyone's running 14 energies now in their Lost Box decks. And uh, two rock sands, three nest balls, and three path. Wow, this is a really strong list, guys. I would use this to get some um, inspiration for my Giratina. As you can see, it's so simple. Not a lot of crazy stuff. Pretty consistent deck. I mean, the thing about Giratina is you're playing the same game every single turn. Every single game, you're playing the same turns. So your hand looks very similar to every single game you play. So you're basically playing the same game every single game. Literally every single match you're playing the same hands, you're playing the same kind of positions. So the deck's pretty consistent, pushing out the, the numbers it needs. Just a little bit slow for first two turns, but after that it just pumps up so much damage. Lugia Archeops actually made it to top seventh in Melbourne. Wow, I've never seen Lugia top not for a while now. Wow. Let's get some inspiration from this deck. Four Archeops. Three Snorlax slowing down the opponent. This could be really good when you... Can he switch? No, but he could boss. Yeah, he's running four boss. He could, what he could do is he could boss something that has a huge retreat cost and just, just keep it there with the Snorlax. Or he could just put this Snorlax down, take some damage. Slow him down. I don't know how this Norlax is actually working. That's crazy. But I guess it's for the 180 damage. I'm not sure what this is for. Three Snorlax. Is it to slow down the opponents? Or actually use it as an attacker? <coughs> I guess it's a... It's a colorless uh, Pokemon that like you, you can use as an attacker. Radiant Charizard there for more damage. Where deer? Once you return, this Pokemon moves from your bench to active. You can move any amount of energy from your other Pokemon to this Pokemon. Wow. Weird deer is actually really strong with this Archaeops deck. Late game. You can get one one hit knockouts. On huge Pokemon. Drapion V is there for the knockout on the Muse. Lux, Luxray is there as well. Because you could use uh, all these energies to put onto the Luxray and get huge attacks. 180 damage with uh, with a single one prizer. Maybe that's what it is. Putting one prizer up, the attack for 180 is actually insane. Because you could do two of those attacks and kill anything in the board. And the opponent only got one prize where, he, where you get two. That's actually interesting. Also for his uh, trainers, four boss, three Burnets to toss out the Archeops. So Burnets give Archeops, uh, the Lugia deck, much more consistency. Before you had to actually put the Archeops into your hand, then toss them out. Now you can just toss them out from the inside the deck. Capturing Aromas at 4, Nest Ball, Mega, Mesa, Goza, and Collapsed. Wow. Very interesting deck, guys. If I'm trying to build the Lugia deck, I would use this as inspiration. There's so much different parts. I want to watch one of these Lugia games to learn how to play this deck. It's pretty interesting. Moving on, guys. Another Gardevoir. Gardevoir is just doing so well in this meta right now. Especially in Melbourne, they're just doing so well. Jetono. Uh, just uh, doing a lot of work here. Nothing special besides maybe 
the Jirachi there to slow down, stabilize. Yeah, but pretty similar to every other Gardevoir. Another Lost Zone deck. This one is not running in Charizard. It's running the Iron Hands instead. And Roaring Moon. Wow. This Lost Zone deck did much better than the Charizard Lost Zone toolbox. Four Darkness, three Water, two Energy, and two Psychic. Very interesting. <clears throat> Only one Roxanne. Running pretty similar setup. Three Escape Ropes. That's a lot of Escape Ropes. Four switch card and two switches. That's a, so much switching happening. Four super rods. Oh my god. There's a Dragonite V in this deck as well. Wow, there's so much interesting stuff in this deck. Honestly, this deck might be much more fun to play than a Giratina V deck. You have so many options. You could do... You could KO huge Pokemon. You could KO one prizers and get two prizers. And you can KO... And you can just have a huge Pokemon on the board that doesn't get removed. And just consistent attacks every turn. Really, really interesting deck, guys. Really liking this. I'm going to try to find the finals so we can look at some of these games. Another Giratina. This one did fourth place Christian Vidi. One Sableye, one Cram, one Spiritomb. Everyone's running Spiritomb now. So they could slow down those Luminions. Could also shut down, I mean, everything in V. Everything, Rotoms, everything. This one's only running 13 energies, so a little bit greedy. Wanted to run more path, I think is what happened. Only one Contra Catcher, so we're not running a bunch of Contra Catcher, just one. Even when we do get a, like, because you are playing from behind, right? When you're running Lost Box, you're pretty much running playing from behind till turn three or four. Interesting, guys. Let's move on. Another Gardevoir. Good job by Nat Natalie. That's a girl that actually did the third place was Natalie. Pretty interesting. And then we got another Charizard EX. Really happy to see this. The second place Charizard EX. Absolutely amazing. Nothing special. Nothing crazy. Just a regular Charizard EX. Just probably played it extremely consistently. Only one counter catcher is what we're seeing here. Not two. Usually we see two. We also see some nest balls, and not only just level balls, we also see nest balls. But yeah, pretty much everything else is pretty consistent. Oh, there he's running a choice belt. Damn, so no vitality bands, instead we ran a choice belt. This is very interesting. For the Tina matchup, that makes sense. Uh, because you can KO Tina if he takes one prize from you. But... There's the uh, EX is such a there, there's so much more EX Pokemon happening right now that I'm surprised that he's actually focused on V Pokemon. Maybe Giratina was a bad matchup for this Charizard. And then finally, Giratina Lost Box by Brent Tonneson won the whole regionals, guys. Pretty pretty simple deck. Straightforward. Four Colrus, two boss, two Roxanne, four Mirage Gate, four Battle VIP, four Nest Balls, four Switch cards, no switches at all. Two Poké Gears, two Super Rods, two Counter Catchers, and four Path. Only one Karam is the right play. No Spirit Toms in this deck, and we're only running 13 Energies. Wow. Wow. I'm actually really impressed with these uh, Giratina Lost Box decks. They do so much. They do so much work with just the Colrus. Honestly, it's just the Colrus that he gives you so much value. Looking, getting three cards, looking at the top five. And gaining two lost zones is just so huge. Doing that three turns in a row, you're already... Even if you never play the Confe, you're already activated. Uh, you're at Mirage Gates. And if you have a little bit more lost zones, you're doing insane amounts of damage with your Star Requiem. Very, very consistent decks, guys. Interested in your opinions. What was your favorite deck? What deck are you going to try to play with? Uh, talk to me. Leave a comment down below. Let's go.